So welcome to episode three of the special antiviral edition of Roll with the Fox. I'm sporting and test driving a brand new gee from Carbine. So shout out to Carbine. For those of you who know me, this is an A3, guys. I know I look a little bit like I normally wear an A1 or A2, but I can't fit into A3. So today, we have three phones going. Um, so we're live on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So hopefully that's it. I don't think there's another arm on that tree of phones that, that can fit another line. So um, guys, today's lesson, I, I, every day I will have a lesson. So it's almost gonna be like an uh, online class. And then uh, we open it to questions. So don't hesitate to ask questions on the lesson. And then once I'm finished with the lesson, we're gonna open it up to questions. If uh, there are no, again, live questions on the technique we're using today, top priority. Second priority is questions in live feed. Third priority is questions we received previously. Um, guys, we have a lot of questions, so I can't get to all of them, although I would love to do that, but uh, it's just, uh, unrealistic unless we go to longer time frame which we may we may do let's see how this thing uh, lasts guys I hope this brings some uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and some joy to your lives uh, if you can't train um, I know some of you frustrated suffering uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu withdrawals guys spend the time that you would normally uh, would go to class spend it watching videos and mark my words your game will not get worse it might stay the same, but sometimes it actually gets better. Your nagging injuries will get healed, hopefully, or you know, tweaks or things like that, but also your game will get better, all right? So today's lesson, guys, we're gonna talk about arm locks. I'm gonna show you an arm lock that I teach very frequently. It is not very uh, practical, and I would strongly discourage people from using it, particularly in an MMA, MMA scenario, uh, but uh, what it does is it's a perfect teaching tool to understand sort of the four big principles of arm locking, okay? That's angle, fulcrum, grip, and follows, okay? So let's look at it. Um, so when I'm on top of cross side, guys, maybe this is the best way. Yeah, this is the best way. All right, so guys, I'm top of cross side and I'm starting to isolate Enrique's arm. And it's pretty easy, even if he has a good frame, to isolate that arm. So I sit out, start, and then I replace. Okay? Um, another time, um, turn this way for a second. Another good time to do this is, say even if he has set up good frame, is to attack baseball bat show, and he starts to get bent, and now his right arm is isolated, all right? So, what we're gonna do, I'm controlling his body. I'm gonna slide my left knee above his head. I don't wanna be too close. I don't wanna be under his shoulder. I wanna be, I wanna have almost a foot, 10, 15 centimeters for our European uh, viewers um, of space, all right? So, usually the guy feels zero danger right here. He understands that he cannot get a good frame because his arm is isolated. However, he does not feel danger, all right? So when I isolate the arm, what I'm gonna do is now post on his shoulder. I just wanna keep him down briefly. I wish she wipe wiper my legs. And then I bring my right foot on top of his torso. So I'm gonna lighten up a little bit on it. All right, so this is what it looks like. Can you sit up? <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it looks like, guys. All right, so watch. I'm using an underarm armpit grip, which is very, very important. It's one of my favorite grips, both R bars and knee bars, okay? Now, the fulcrum is not my hips. The fulcrum is my inner thigh. Okay, so already covered two topics, which is the grip. There's three basic grips for arm locking. And we also covered 
sort of the fulcrum. So not the traditional fulcrum of your hips, but your inner thigh. We're gonna go over another arm lock where your fulcrum is actually gonna be your shin. Yes, shin. An angle, look at the angle, guys. This looks like a pretty bad angle. Look, my own hands. All right, so let's change the angle so they can see from the position. Okay, so again, I'm top of cross side. I'm a big fan when I'm on top of cross side is both hands on the same side. I will change this one, this one as well as I need to attack, okay? So, I may threaten baseball bat choke, and at, you know, if he has a good frame, so baseball bat choke, I have isolation. So he successfully defended the baseball bat choke. Now my hand goes on the shoulder, I windshield wipe on my legs. Notice that my kneecap is above his head, that's the key. Here's the line, so I wanna be above. And look how much space there is, I bring this. Okay, so we cover, grip, fulcrum, angle, and now we're gonna cover follow. Suppose you don't do it well. As he's coming up, I'm gonna cover his wrist. I'm gonna make sure that he's coming up. And we switch into a very strong triangle. Okay, so let's recap. We cover the grip, angle, fulcrum, and follow, all right? So one of the most important things, guys, people have a tendency when they arm lock, people usually grip by, with two hands. To me, this is a grip that's useful when you have to change the angle very, very quickly. Otherwise, that's the grip you should be using the least. The grip you should be using the most is this, to your chest. Uh, I'm a big fan of underarm armpit grip. The other thing is a lot of people start to lose arm locks, even though they set it up properly. Everything is in place, and they the guy just turns a, a little bit uh, away. So all you need to do is change the angle, where sometimes now you're switching the pain uh, and uh, the potential break from the elbow. They're switching into their shoulder. But people still try to crank the arm so that they can ride it out, uh, crank the elbow. So most important thing, guys, when that happens is, okay, we're gonna go. So now transition the pressure into the shoulder. The reason I teach this arm bar that we just went over, and I'm gonna go over it again. Uh, in my classes, again, it's not super practical, but it really, if you can do this arm lock, you can figure out the subtleties in angles and the fulcrum to the point where if you are locking people from your guard in other positions, this is a tremendous tool to help you out with that, all right? So I'm gonna try to do it solo. So I'm on, on top of Enrique. I threaten the baseball bat, he covers. I will isolate his arm. And now, I bring this over and usually this is a finish. I don't arch my hips whatsoever, guys. The break is down here. The break is, his, his arm is draped over my inner thigh, and that's where the break is. Um, by the way, this helped me tremendously to develop the split guard because that grip is very, very similar. So let's look at it again. Very similar grip here. Can everybody see how, how similar this is? And when I start to bring my knee up higher, this starts to remind you of that arm lock, except I'd be on my left side. Right? Yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can do this with me without me breaking your arm. We can. We can. So, guys, when you practice this arm lock, it really helps your execution and increases the, uh, the submission rate on your arm locks. So we're gonna look at it one more time. We're gonna go over the foul off that, which is a triangle. All right? So let's do this again. <laughs> So, yeah, baby. So, I start to isolate the arm. So even if the guy has good, good frame, just threatening baseball bat choke, a gentleman will open it up. My hand is already on the shoulder. Windshield wipe from my legs. You could see the pain slowly increasing on Enrique's face. Guys, this one I will bring 
fairly quickly. And this is over. I'm gonna lighten up on it. If he's coming up, guys, grab his wrist first. So you wanna make sure you can clear. And as he's coming in, he's going into an extremely deep triangle. Um, as I said, this arm lock is very similar. It's basically split guard on my side. By the way, yesterday somebody had a question on clamp guard and split guard. Um, to me, a clamp guard is more of, of sort of clamping down. Um, the, di the big difference, so maybe like this, all right? Uh, split guard uh, to me is more, I I'll always make sure that I have both feet on the hip and I wanna make sure that at least you know, not at least. One arm in, one arm out. That's why I'm splitting his upper body. So if you can see this, this is basically that arm lock on the side. Tap, tap. Oh. <laughs> uh, guys, do we have any questions on this? Uh, Mike Van Vlet asked, how are you using the gable grip to finish the arm bar? On this one? This particular arm bar, we're not. Lay down. Please. So I have my sleeve, right? There is no grip. Look, my no hands. That's the whole point, guys. When you start to play this arm lock or the split guard, the best part about it is your hands are free to either block his wrist. You know, you, you, you're not gonna go out here, but you could still grab the wrist and use them for other forms of control. Literally, my legs are doing bulk of the control. Look, look, no break. Pull. Try to tap, tap, tap. The more, the harder the guy tries to pull out, as he's pulling out, his arm is getting straighter and the tendons are getting tighter, which basically means that I have to apply less pressure to finish. So there is no gable grip on this one. I use I use the gable grip on Woody and Tommy. There's a couple of different grips to use. That is one of them. Uh, but for this one, guys, no, the hands engagement is limited. My hands are used to do other things. Uh, you know, I may grip his elbow with my left. My right is going to go on, on, on his left wrist. But other than that, there's limited engagement with my hands. And a lot of asked, can you show the version that the person twists his hand? Okay. <laughs> a lot, I think you just made Enrique kind of sad, but we're gonna go down that path. <laughs> See, your pronunciation is getting so much better, Mike. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> so, so a lot of times, for example, I'm going for an arm lock, right? And I try to set it up. And the guy starts to, yeah, he starts to cut an angle. So he's, it, no matter how much I arch, it's not gonna happen for me. But if I apply the pressure, right now, the pressure is in his shoulder. So um, let's, let's look at it from close guard. There's a lot of different ways, but when you start playing with arm locks, you will start to realize, okay, he's changing the angle or he's changing sort of the pressure from the elbow to the shoulder. So when he changes, he st and usually the, it's a very clear sign, but he bends his arm. Attack the shoulder. Now, if, if the response to shoulder being in danger is arm extension, attack the elbow. All right, so I'm basically, you know, it's bad. And Adam Thompson asked, what is keeping his arm from turning with the armpit grip? Um, it's very difficult. It's, it's my uh, very good question. Guys, it's your hip movement, all right? So we talked about yesterday. Let's, let's, let's go down that path. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. So if he has, if the guy, you know, with the D, he, will, he may hold on to uh, to your lapel, you can hold on to 
So I need to strip. I, I worry only about one. Now I have an attack. All right? Now, right now I'm att attempting a, an arm drag. Of course the guy's going to fight me. Now I have the split guard. If Enrique decides, there's two ways he can go now. Uh, he may decide to turn away, then he's giving me all fire right away, okay? I would like to control this arm. If he doesn't, he comes, tries to come back in the middle. Notice how my hips are cradling his arm and controlling where, where his elbow's pointing. So his elbow's pointing actually towards the ground right now. As I'm hipping in, his elbow starts to point in the direction that I want to, all right? So again, guys, the arm lock that we went over earlier, that oddball side control arm lock, is a very good teaching tool and very good learning tool on how to play around with the subtleties of, of uh, arm locking. Uh, there is, I, I believe there's actually two videos, they're both free, on YouTube of uh, Firas and I uh, talking about arm locks, and I believe there's ar arm locks part one and part two. It's on TriStar Gym channel, so if you go to TriStar Gym channel and go to uh, arm locks, uh, uh, you can just put Firas and Carl, K-A-R-E-L, um, and the arm locks videos will come up. There's part one and part two. So there's uh, probably at least 40 minutes, if not an hour discussion of arm locking. Um, so I'd encourage you guys, if you need more detail, go into that. Mike, we have other questions on this specific technique, so otherwise I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, on Facebook, a lot said, sorry, Enrique. And on Instagram, <laughs> uh, the karate wrestler asked the, the key lock that you showed from the guard, is that similar to the mirror lock? Yes. To some, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, his is more pronounced, uh, I believe, because uh, what, uh, uh, who did he do it to? Uh, I think he did it to uh, Nogueira, I believe. Um, gave him a, a, a much sharper angle. Uh, what I'm usually working with uh, is, 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 is not quite as sharp of an angle. Um, but it is a variation of that, yes. All right, so. Let's move on. Mike looks like a conductor, just so you guys know. He's scanning one, <laughs> one phone to another, to an iPad. And fortunately, he's not holding anything in his hand. So today, unlike the first episode of the antiviral <laughs> Roll with the Fox, <laughs> I didn't watch it till later in the afternoon. But I watched it, I wanted to smack him in the back of the head. <laughs> so let's, let's go to the other one. So, Guys, again, this one is this one I use a lot actually. This is a another arm lock from top of cross side. And again, we gotta pay attention to those four things. Angle, fulcrum, grip, and follow. In this case, if you do this right, you will not need a follow. If you do it wrong, you will be on the bottom cross side. I'm pretty good. my guys hit it on other people all the time. When they try to hit it on me, I escape. They wind up on top of cross side. But here it is. So uh, I'm on top of cross side, and Enrique has good frame. So I want his arm to pop out on my right side of the hip. So this is how I set him up. I start to threaten north south. Now, guys. We will do it from the other angle, but I want to point out one thing. My left elbow is flared out because I know when you do this, the guy's hope is to bust out. So my left elbow is flaring out to buy me a little bit of time. If he does this. Oh, yeah, we're going there. So again, he protected his arm. Now, this is not part of the, the arm lock. I just want to stay on top. So my left elbow is flared out. So as soon as he starts to isolate, I have his arm on the correct side where I want it to be. I want it to be on my right hip. I'm going to square back up and I drive forward to make it look like I'm attacking the far side arm. All right? So he's a, he's on a, Possible threat of an arm lock, Kimura, or key lock, all 
right? Then I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna windshield wiper my, my legs. Guys, pay attention, look. There's a lot of space here. If you go close, you will lose it. So I want, I'm gonna slide down, but have at least a foot, 10 to 15 centimeters, okay? Between his torso and mine. So my right shin is lined up with this much space, okay? I pose and I sit back. So again, the break now is, right now, I feel where his elbow is. 10 minutes left, yes, Mike. So right now, his elbow is inside pointing to the ceiling, his elbow pointing to the floor. So I just bring my own elbow down. If his elbow is pointing to the wall, inside to the elbow, I just bring my inner thigh in. So this is where you're allowing yourself to play different angles. So let's look at it from the other side. So first, I'm gonna set him up. Guys, by the way, this is one of my favorite arm locks. And uh, I do, we got a slide to do. Guys, I do wanna ask you one question. Am I speaking slower? I got a message from Central Europe this morning that I speak too fast, whether I could do this in Czech. I will try, but my check is brutal at best. So <laughs> I suggested they learn better English, but I'm, try I'm gonna try to accommodate. But at the very least, I'm trying to speak slower. So that way people uh, who has English as a second language can follow a little bit better. Hopefully I, I can catch myself that my rhythm goes up and down. So let me know, all right? So let's look at this thing again. So I wanna, have his arm pop out. Look at my out left elbow flared out, so if he do, tries to bust, I have a good base of support. He tried to bust, didn't work, I make it look like I'm attacking the far side arm. I'm gonna step over, and sit back. There is no place for him to go. He's done. If he arches, he's done. Can you arch high? Yeah. Very, very tight arm lock. Again, um, the fulcrum tends to be sort of the outside of my hips, but most often it will be sort of your inner thigh. Again, we're using the under armpit grip, which is one of my favorites. Uh, guys, when you play around with the under armpit grip, I use it for knee bars as well. Uh, you have to slow down your game because it will tighten up that grip so much that if you do this fast, you know, if, if your arm locks, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to say it in that way, a little bit sloppy where people escape and you switch to this and you tighten up your game, you're gonna be hitting people so fast that they don't have time to tap, they kind of just scream out or yell out, yelp out, tap. So make sure when you start playing with this, you're gonna do it slow. Now, I'm gonna, again, try to do this. So, okay, so I'm on top of cross side, he has a good, he has a good um, good frame. So how do I make his his uh, right arm pop out? His right hand is across my throat, okay? So I bring over to the other side, and I sit out. As I sit out, he brings his arm here. I keep flaring out my left elbow to make sure I don't get, you know, toppled over. As soon as that arm gets isolated, I come back in, and I isolate, and I'm already I make it look like I'm attacking the far side arm, one-handed only, step over, and now I sit back, I try to control the far side arm, and now, I'm not laying down, guys, do not lie back right away, because if you have the correct angle, the correct grip, if you let, put your back on the ground, you will break his arm. So let's look at it one more time. Yeah, make it a good break. <laughs> Guys, if I put my back on the ground, there will be no episode tomorrow. <laughs> Enrique will be in a sleep. Okay? Look how far my back. Normally people are doing this. Okay? So understand how tight this is. Okay? Let me address one other issue that is 
the single biggest problem that people have when unlocking people or trying to. The biggest issue, guys, is the fact that people use both hands. When I unlock people from the guard, from the top, I will rarely use two hands. The only time I use two hands is when I need to grab two on one wrist so that way I can change left direction, right direction quickly. Train yourself to use one hand, one arm, when you arm lock. Let me go over a couple of arm lock scenarios real quick so you can see what I mean, okay? So we're doing this one, right? Don't worry, I'll make that arm pop out. <laughs> Look, one hand, okay? Guard. Look, one hand, guys. One hand. You don't need two. I am not the strongest big person in the world, but I, all I need is one hand, okay? Uh, pop up cross side, far side arm lock. Look guys, one hand, one arm. The other one is too busy posting and doing other things. Now, everything's set up, I'm switch. This is the only time I will switch to two, two hands. And the reason for that is so if I need to, I push, use my left hand to pull to the left. If he tries to spin the other way, I know it's kind of, yeah. I use my right to pull to my right. That's the strongest and quickest movement. That's the only time I will use two hands in an arm lock scenario, okay? So guys, I know we have only about three minutes, so let's see if there's any questions on this. Um, so guys, we're gonna try to keep it to 30 minutes for now, because now we're on Instagram Live, Facebook Live, and YouTube Live. So hopefully the sound quality, we only have one speaker, we have three devices, but one speaker, so hopefully the, the sound quality and the, you know, the picture quality is coming across well. Mike's no longer holding it in his hands, trying to jam it into the, the tree of uh, devices. What do we got? On YouTube, Joshua Johnson asks, what is stopping them from ripping their arm out from the near side arm lock? Oh. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They can't. Not gonna happen. They will break their own arm. We're gonna do this really, really slow because I'd like, guys, I've committed to do this daily, so I wanna make sure that Enrique is here tomorrow, otherwise I gotta draft somebody from my, from my students. And again, I am keeping the circle of contact. Contact is five, six feet, not touching. Circle of contact, very limited. And I'm literally asked, like Mike, has limited circle of contact, so does Enrique, and so do I, so. All right, so, I'm not even holding this, okay? I'm gonna let go, just get yeah. happy. You know, Enrique is good black though. You guys know that, right? Go ahead, pull out, I, I, like whatever, whatever, whatever feels good. Can you pull out straight? Why can't you pull out straight? <laughs> All right, spin around so people can see your face. <laughs> so let's go. Tap. 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 So either this arm lock is really good or Enrique is an amazing actor. I'll let you guys decide. One minute left. So what do we got? And Oscar goes to. On Instagram, Jiu Jitsu Life asks Do you favor the single arm grip over the Kimura grip? Yes. Um, uh, Enrique asked, Who asked the question about yanking their arm out? Oh, that was Joshua Johnson on YouTube. <laughs> can, we, can we get a location on, on Joshua? <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you for tuning in. So the question is uh, uh, Kimura grip? versus our um, single arm. Um, 
I'm not, I have bad wrists, especially the left one. And I found even, you know, even if you have a good Kimura grip, um, you can, strong enough and explosive enough guys and technical enough guys can actually turn a Kimura grip on you. Uh, I know Kimura grips two on one, but uh, I found it that I, I, I prefer to, I will use Kimura grip, but a lot of times I will switch into just the regular arm lock. So for example, if I, if I have a, a Kimura and the guy is defending really well, he's holding on really tight. Um, so I know a lot of times what's gonna happen, if he can drop his elbow down, he's gone. So before that happens, so if I get this grip and I, I have a feeling that the guy, I just prop myself up and switch into an arm lock. And I usually, my other hand tends to focus, be focused on other things. Lock up for me for a second. So, you know, if, if especially you got somebody strong, um, I will go two on one, but only to, to pry it open. But generally speaking, I will start out with, yeah, now, now he's done, all right? Can everybody see the angle? Where am I applying his pressure? Because he bent the arm. Where is his pressure, guys? For Enrique's sake, somebody answer, guys. It's the shoulder. All right? So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the third episode of Antivirus, Roll with the Fox. Try to have some mercy on him tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow again, 10.30 a.m., Eastern time, which is New York City time. I think we're five hours ahead of Europe. Uh, I think in a couple weeks it's gonna be six hours, but right now, that's the time difference. <laughs> Guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, watch content, watch videos. Not, you know, if you want mine, if my approach to this is great, share it, uh, like it, and, and, and bring others. If you like somebody else's approach, somebody, uh, you know, maybe has a different game that maybe, maybe more appeals to you, Watch them, guys. It will help improve your game, even if you cannot train. All the best, guys. Stay well and be kind to your other fellow human beings. Keep your circle of contact small. Bye.